man. The shadow knows. <laughs> Once again, your neighborhood blue coal dealer brings you the thrilling adventures of the shadow, the hard and relentless fight of one man against the forces of evil. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcefully to old and young alike that crime does not pay. The lucky householders, whose homes are heated with hard coal, are enjoying steady, uninterrupted, healthful warmth in every room. Even when winter winds blow and the temperature dives to zero, there's no need to cut down heat or close off rooms in homes heated with dependable hard coal. Yes, sir, when you have a supply of hard coal in your basement, you're the boss of heating your house. You are absolutely independent of any outside service. Be glad you heat with anthracite, the home heating fuel that never fails. Remember, blue coal is the finest anthracite money can buy. The shadow, who aids the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Years ago in the Orient, Cranston learned a strange and mysterious secret, the hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, one dead and two to go. It is midnight. In the dark offices of the Midland Securities Company, two men work feverishly behind the guarded beam of a flashlight. How do you have moved? And Rocco, the watchman, hits this spot every half hour. I'm hurrying, Petey. It ain't that easy. Uh, there it comes. Good. Uh, like opening a kid's piggy bank. When Rocco came to the job, there's nothing left to see. See, the cabbage should be in the upper right hand drawer. The piles of. He ain't green or restful color. Must be a hundred grand there. Yeah, and more than that, unless they got crooks working in this joint. Stick it in the back. Okay. Now, let's get out of here. Shh. The watchman. Take the bag. I'll cover you. Get the car ready to go. Okay. What's going on in there? This way. Out the back. Ah! Get that car started. I'll try to stop him. Shoot him, Petey. Get in. I'm coming. Just one I'm more. I'm Hey, wait for me. Wait for me. No more, be old. Hey, the dirty ran out on me. Not the gun. Stop it. Yeah. Okay, copper. Except Pace. <laughs> I lost my head, Rocco. I heard the cops coming, so I ran. You ran. Well, how about Peter? You know the cops got him, don't you? What do you think he's doing? He's probably singing louder than an amateur hour at Soprano. Well, he would have got both of us, I tell you. The watchman was right on top of us. So it. you powered it. There was two of you to his one. What do you think he had a rod for? Now we... Who's that? Hi, Rocco. Uh, Peter's wife with me. Just a second. Rolo, yeah, that dog's like you. Don't go far. Okay, okay, Rocco. Hello, Rocco. I don't believe you know this lady. Mrs. Peterson, this is Rocco. Tyler's his wife, Rocco. How do you do? Uh, you mean a punk kid like Petey rates a dream like you? Well, oh, we... Rocco. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, come in, come in, Mrs. Peterson. Hey. You told her what we want, Joyce? Uh, generally, Rocco. I suppose you tell her the whole story. Well, uh, we want you to make sure Petey clams up. Don't talk, see? He gets the same rap what he talks or not. But if he don't, he gets his share of 100 G's. See? Well, uh, I don't... Well, that's I don't... pretty good sense, Mr. Peterson. If he pleads guilty, he'll have him out in a couple of years. There'll be an estate waiting. Turn state's evidence. There'll be nothing for anybody when he gets out. All right. I'll do anything you say. Good, good. Now, here's the story. He pleads guilty, he refuses to sell a cop's anything. Takes his rap and then leaves it up to Joyce here to get him sprung later. Okay? All right. I'll, I'll do it. Fine. Fine. Now, would you mind waiting outside for a moment? I have some business. Oh, of course. Goodbye, baby. Be seeing you. Goodbye. Oh, what a dish. A 
imagine that being wasted on a punk kid like Petey. Hey, uh, Rocco. Yes, yeah? First, you know, if Petey pleads guilty, they throw the book at him. You get 20 years at least. There'll be no chance at all of getting him out later. None. So what? Then there'd be one cut less on a dope. And I don't mind taking care of Lila. <laughs> That's the least I can do for a pal. <laughs> Ready for tea? Mm-hmm. Helen is ready, Rana. Not much at all, Margot. Why, Lamar? Any customers for a person to see? Yes, from the looks of things, this boy's going to plead guilty. But he is guilty, Lamar. The watchman caught him at the scene of the robbery with a gun in his hand. Yes, but I hope he'd cooperate. He could help us smash the gang behind all these robberies. At least they got him. He's small fry. What I want is the brains behind all this. Look, Margot, the prisoner at the bar. How do you plead to the charge of the You plead guilty, Your Honor. You mean this boy is willing to plead guilty without making any attempt at execution? They plead guilty is charged. Well, I'll demand you to the custody of the marshal. We'll return to this poor text marshal's consent. Come on, Margot. Where are you going? I want to talk to that lawyer. Come along. Uh, just a moment. Yes? You're Mr. Joyce? Yes? My name is Lamont Cranston. I'm interested in your client. What can I do for you, Mr. Cranston? I think a plea of guilty might be in state, Mr. Joyce. Are you questioning my handling of my client's affairs, Cranston? Mr. Joyce, you pardon me, Mr. Cranston. Well, Lamar, we didn't get very far with you. No, we didn't. Something funny about this whole case, Martin. You'd better have a talk with the prisoner himself. Maybe I can persuade him he's being played for a sucker. <laughs> Petey, I'm here to help you. Yeah? Break out the ripsaw, then. That's the only help I want from you. That was a foolish thing you did, pleading guilty? I don't think so. Could mean 20 years to life. It won't. I got friends. Heard sometimes that friendship ends at the prison gate. Suppose your friends forget you. I'm the type that's hard to forget. Besides, I might get awful annoyed. But don't worry about that. I'll be taken care of. You cooperated with the police to help get the money back? You'd like that, wouldn't you? Well, no self. I ain't soft. Maybe you ought to tell me who the boss of the gang is. Uh, Just in case. Now, look, mister. Get this straight. If they double-cross me, all you have to do is read the obituary columns to find out who they were. You're down the minute you get out of the exercise room, Peterson. See that car driving along the road over there? It's my getaway. When it reaches that pole, I break for it. You ain't got a chance. I ain't got a chance if I don't. I'm being double crossed now. My own pals. But they won't get away with it. What do I do? This 
Despite a severe head wound, Peterson, the convict who escaped from state penitentiary this afternoon, is believed headed for the city, where, according to a fellow inmate, he intends reprisals against members of his gang who double-crossed him. Police say... Reprisals, huh? He's after me. He's after me, that's who he's after. Got to get his old pal, Louie. He thinks I drove away and left him there on purpose. Hey, maybe Peter's right outside now waiting for me. I didn't double-cross him. I was afraid of the cops. The cops? Yeah, they protect me. Wait a minute now. What was the name of that guy that Mark Pete said wanted to make a deal? Manson or Winston? Cranston, that's it. Lamont Cranston. Where's that telephone book? I'm gonna sing my way out of this mess. <laughs> Grand Avenue. Well, Mark, don't you think we should have let Commissioner Weston handle this? It may be a trap. I don't think so, darling. The man sounded genuinely frightened. But he wouldn't even tell you who he was. He told me enough. The name is Louie, and he drove the car the night of the robbery. I think Speedy's out to kill him for leaving him there. I don't like the looks of the place, you want. It looks disturbing. Well, go in and find out. Well, what's your so sick now, I never... Mm. I don't see any light. Well, not. There's no light in here either, Mom. Hello? Anyone home? Lamar, can't we have some light? Must be a switch here someplace. Come on up. I think I heard something. Listen. Yeah. There is someone in here. He's coming closer. Where's well, his light? Mm-hmm. Look out, Lamar! Return to the shadow in just a minute. Friends, is your home heated with a type of fuel now hard to get? If so, I'd like to ask you three questions. One, would you like to cut your fuel bill in half? Two, would you like to be sure of plenty of fuel for steady, uninterrupted, healthful warmth in every room of your home? Three, would you like to continue to enjoy the convenience of fully automatic home heat? I'm sure your answers are all yes. And there is only one way these things can be accomplished. Switch to hard coal and install an automatic stoker. At current price levels, stoker-sized hard coal will cut your fuel bill in half. Stoker sizes of hard coal are plentiful, and enough can be stored to carry you through the severe part of the winter. Modern, efficient, fully automatic stokers are available right now, and they soon pay for themselves in fuel savings. With a hard coal stoker, the fire is fueled automatically, and ashes are removed automatically. The healthful, even coal fire warmth is automatically controlled by a thermostat in your living room. The blue coal dealer in your neighborhood can give you full information about stokers and installation. It will pay you to call the nearest blue coal dealer tomorrow. Now, back to the shadow. Mount Cranston and Margot Lane are on their way to see Louis, a member of a safe tracking ring who, in return for protection, has volunteered to give Cranston the information he needs to smash the ring. Lamont and Margot step into Louis's darkened house when they hear someone approach. Listen, Lamont. There is someone in here. Look out, Lamont. Look out. I got him. I found the light switch. He's been shot. It's Louis. He's badly hurt, Margot. Louis. Louis, can you hear me? You're, you're Cranston? Yes, Louis. We came as fast as we could. Who did this? Peter. He's killed crazy. He's one dead and two to go. What did he mean by that, Louis? He's going to kill us all. Where can I find him? I don't know. Maybe his wife. <coughs> his wife. Where can I find his wife, Louis? Alvarado Arms. On... Yes. Oh. Louis. Louis. Come on, is he dead? Yes, One dead and... Two to go. Says there were two more murders coming up. Peterson told me himself his gang crossed him. I'd read their names in the obituary columns. Margot, we've got to move fast. Where are we going? To his wife's place. Petey's bound to show up there sooner or later. You said 
shouldn't come here, Rocco. Now, what's the matter with coming here, baby? I'm taking you away with me, ain't I? Oh, I can't do that, Rocco. I can't run out on Peter. If you want to rot in this here rat trap, what can he do for you? Can he set you up in the kind of joint you should have with clothes and jewels and stuff? I don't know. Yeah, but I can, see? I got over a hundred grand. Right where I can lay my hands on it. Come here, baby. No, Rocco. Don't, please. Okay. Have it your own way. I had a little present for you, but... What was the present? Hey, you wouldn't be interested. Let me see it. Please. Okay. Yeah. Feast your eyes on this, baby. <gasps> diamond. Biggest diamond I ever saw. Beautiful. Was that for me, Rocco? Well, it's just the beginning. But you're not interested. A girl can change her mind, can't she, Rocco? Mm. Now you're talking. Help me, baby. <laughs> Rocco. Yeah? When do we leave? I can be back here with the dawn now. I'll be waiting, Rocco. All packed and waiting. This must be Mrs. Peterson's apartment. Mm. Who's that? My name is Cranston, Mrs. Peterson. I'd like to talk to you. What is it? About your husband, Mrs. Peterson. Oh, well... Come on in. Uh, this is Miss Lane. Hello. Uh, how do you do? Uh, what about Petey, Mr. Cranston? We have reason to believe he's here in town. He killed one of his former gang, a man named Louis. Louis? Then I'm next, Mr. Cranston. Petey thinks I double-crossed him. He'll try to kill me, too. Police will protect you, Mr. Peterson. Protect me? How? You don't know Petey. He's smart. No. My only chance is to get away. Haven't heard from him, Mr. Peterson? Not yet, but I will. I know I will. Well, you didn't double-cross him, Mrs. Peterson. He doesn't know that. He doesn't know that it was Joyce, his lawyer, who set the whole thing up. He thinks I have. Joyce. I thought there was something funny about the way he handled that case. Margot, I think uh, possibly we'd better drop by and see Mr. Joyce. But, Mrs. Peterson... I'll be all right, Miss Lane. Mr. Cranston, if I need you, can I call on you? I wouldn't want to call in the police. After all, Petey is my husband. That's the way you want it, Mr. Peterson. Yeah, thanks. Goodbye, Mr. Peterson. So long. What are you really going to try to see that lawyer? Yes, Margot, I think he may be the key to the whole case. You've already talked to him, and he wouldn't even discuss the case with him. He wouldn't discuss the case with Lamont Prince tomorrow. But I have an idea he'll talk to the shadow. Came Louis' house, Rocco. He phoned me. Yeah, well, he called me too. He's scared of death. So what? He's dead, Rocco. No fool. Doesn't come as much of a surprise. Ah, yeah, no one lives forever. Particularly if he has a share of some money coming to him, Rocco. What do you want? First, there were four cuts out of the money. Louis, Petey, you and me. Then we arranged for Petey to um, retire from the scene. Then there were only three. Yeah, now with Louis dead, there's only two. You and me. That's right, Rocco. You and me. So I think we better split the dough now. Before something happens to either of us. Okay. Maybe you're right. Maybe we ought to split it up. Oh, I thought you'd see it my way. I, uh, ain't got it here. I... Gotta go get it. Now, suppose you bring it to my place, Rocco. I'll be waiting for you. Okay, George. And don't you worry. You're gonna get what's coming to you. (laughs) 
Am I in time for a cocktail, Joyce? Hmm? Somebody say something? Yes, Joyce. The shadow spoke. Shadow? Here? Aren't you going to ask me to sit down? I, uh, of course. Uh, uh, sit down. Uh, this chair is comfortable. Thank you. Uh, join me in a drink, Shadow? No, thanks, Joyce. This is uh, quite an experience, you know. Meeting an invisible man this way. You don't seem very upset. Uh, I'm not, Shadow. I, as long as I can meet you face to face, I can eliminate you. <laughs> But I hit you with the bottle. You didn't really think I'd sit in that chair as a target, did you? <laughs> what do you want with me, Chad? The truth. About why you railroaded Peterson. I didn't. I did my best for him. You lie, Joyce. Now tell me, why did you do it? I... I couldn't help myself. I was forced into it. They would have killed me. They? Louis and Peterson or the head of the gang? The head of the gang. Who is he? I... His name is Rocco. He's got a place on the boulevard, 916 North. Will I find Peterson hiding there, Joyce? I don't know. I don't know where Peter is. You don't seem terribly afraid of Peterson, Joyce. I'm not, Shadow. And I'll tell you why I'm not afraid of Peter. It's because... Joyce! Mrs. Peterson, this is Lamont Cranston. I've been trying to reach you. Thank heavens you called. I've been trying to reach you, too. Joyce is dead, Mr. Peterson. He was shot by someone outside the window of his apartment. It was Petey who did it. He phoned me, Mr. Cranston. Said he was coming for me. He's going to kill me, too. I see. Look, Mr. Peterson, when he gets there, stall him. I'll be over as soon as I can. Yeah, all set, Rocco. You got the dough? Sure, sure, I got it. Hey, you're all dressed up, baby, huh? I wanted to look pretty for you, Rocco. You're packed? Yeah. Well, then let's get going. You got the whole hundred thousand? Oh, sure, 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 I got it, baby. Good. How about uh, Joyce? Well, I don't think he's going to need his share. Well, anyway, we're not going to wait to find out. Come on, come on. Rocco, you haven't kissed me. We got to go, baby. Oh, all right. Okay, baby. Now you, Petey. Oh no, 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 Petey. No. Okay, well, that's good. Did I do okay? You did okay, Petey. You did fine. No. Now can we go away? Just you and... Oh, my head hurts. Sure, sure, Petey. Just let me get that money. There's just one more thing I want you to do for me, Petey. Sure, Lila, sure. Then we can go away. Can we, Lila? Come in. This way, out in the hallway. <laughs> hey, this is the steps, Lila. Yeah. Are we going now, or... We're going away now? Not yet. In, in a minute, a door down there is going to open, Petey. A man named Cranston is going to come in. You want me to shoot him, Lila? No, 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 Petey. He's going to be my witness. I don't understand, Lila. My head hurts. There he comes. Get closer to the edge of the steps. Okay, Lila. Okay. Okay. Don't look at me, Petey. Please, don't... Look at me. Where is he? Why didn't Cranston come up? You heard him come in. Why didn't he come? Why didn't he come? I can't stand this. I can't wait any longer. What are you going to do with that gun, Lila? Get that gun away from me. Shadow, Lila. Shadow? You hit my hand. Yes. You fired into the banister, Lila. You didn't shoot, Petey. I did. I did, Shadow. He's dead. No, Lila. 
You merely pushed him down the stairs. He'll recover. No. No, he won't. He can't. He can't. But he will, Lila. He'll recover to testify against you for murder. <laughs> So it was Lila Peterson all along, Lamar. Yes, Margot. She was the one who helped Petey escape from the penitentiary in the first place. And when she realized that Petey was almost out of his mind from that bullet wound, she decided to use him to kill Louis and later Rock. She shot Joyce herself. She was afraid he might tell the shadow the truth. Mm. When did you first suspect Lila, Lamar? When she spoke to me on the phone. I was pretty sure she was going to try to use me as a witness. As witness to prove that she'd shot Petey in self-defense. She already had the money... Petey's death would cover her trail forever. What Louis said was true then, Lamar. When we found him, he said, one dead and two to go. Yes, Margot. Now it's three dead and one to go. Because Lila Peterson will pay for her crimes with her life. Now let me present Blue Cold's distinguished heating authority, John Bartley. Thank you, Andre Baruch, and good evening, friends. Many people think we're having an abnormal winter. However, the United States Weather Bureau reports temperatures so far this winter are just about normal. So you can expect this kind of weather any year. And government experts tell us, too, that we can expect a continued fuel oil shortage for a number of years. So the suggestion made earlier that householders now using other types of fuel switch to hard coal is really a very sensible one. The hard coal stoker, you have your home heating problem licked. You'll save up to 50% of your fuel cost, you're sure of dependable home heating, and you'll have all the conveniences of fully automatic heating and temperature control. I thank you. This story is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. The characters, names, places, and plot are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Again next week, the shadow will demonstrate that... The weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs>